Jamie arrives. And we're back with the uh, Horror with Marchese and Buller show uh, with <laughs> Gary Buller. <laughs> and he's turned into... Um, <laughs> he's turned into late Peter Steele, rest in peace, from uh, Typo Negative. Okay, so this episode, we're talking about speech to text. Yes. Now, you always tell me you're, you're a big fan of... Um, reading stories at, to, to, to edit them and I've mm-hmm. and I, I feel the same way it does catch a lot of stuff and it makes it makes the story actually more readable because you're reading it as somebody would talk it makes it even easier for if you're gonna send it to a place that's doing a podcast that where they're reading or if you, if you even if you go and sit in front of a place that you're reading it to a crowd it's gonna make it easier for you because you've got it into that formatting but I was thinking why not skip that whole thing and just speech to text? From the mm-hmm. get-go, and this way it'll be already formatted. I mean, you may have to go in and take a few things out and that are aren't consistent, but it'll make it a little bit easier. You, you're skipping a process pretty much. Yeah, I, I, that's what you're saying. I think I think one of the problems with speech text is uh, uh, depends on what you're using to lay down the words, what software. So sometimes when I'm speaking to my iPhone, I it'll mistake words and mix words up and it's not always right and sometimes I need to get it in my head first before I lay it down yeah so I think to speak yeah it's a way of sort of putting down your thoughts you know you, as they come into your head but I think in terms of story structure I think I'd struggle personally a little bit with it though I am a big advocate of the the, the reading you know the software that reads out your story once you've written it it, I, I used that on this story that we've been editing today, and that's that's been brilliant. It's picked up like three or four mistakes that I didn't even notice when I read through it. You know, because it forces you to look at each individual word, and you know, it, if it's a misspelling, it spells it out for you as well. What I find too is like when after I finish a story, I'll open it up on my cell phone, and I'll just hold yeah. it as I'm walking in the street, and I'll just start mm. reading it out loud really fast, like I won't even think about it. And sometimes yeah. it'll be different from what's on the on the page. I'm like, oh man, that sounds more natural. It'll just the more natural way to say it will just pop out as I'm narrating, yeah. and I, and that too catches a lot of stuff. And then sometimes you have to even change the sentence after to make it sound a little better, to, yeah. to you know to, to coincide with the what you just changed. Yeah, I, I, I find it quite difficult. I think I, I have tried it. You know sort of laying notes down, you know, in your, your notes. I, I mean, I have an iPhone, it's got the notes option, and sometimes when I've got an idea, I'll speak out loud and it'll sort of record it down. Yeah. I look back at it sometimes and the sentences don't make cohesive sense. <laughs> you know, they're just like, the word, the, either the iPhone software has mixed words up or it's not structurally correct for a story. Well, you also definitely have to have a lot of quiet too. You have to have it quiet and it also, the... I think it also depends on the phone too, because if it doesn't capture the voice, like if it's a slower phone, it won't yeah. capture the voice fast enough to to decode it. Because I, I got the Note 9, I actually waited a long time to uh, upgrade, and and it's a really great upgrade, and it works pretty well. The, the 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 capturing of the voice. There's also a program for the PC called Dragon. Oh yeah. Yeah, and that's that's supposed to be really like award-winning and speech to text all you want on that one. Oh, very cool. So do you do it often? I have been because all I'm, I, I'm able to bring around is my phone now, so I'll be mm. tapping away with my keys, but sometimes, you know, that gets a little hectic to do because, you know, you, look, you have to look all around, so this way at least you can talk into your phone and it, you know, types it out for you as you go. Yeah, I, I think the phone's an invaluable device, really, when it comes to my, um, my writing in general. I find that if I'm reading off my phone, I read it better than I would on a monitor or off my laptop. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm sat on a bus and I just, I think I pick up mistakes that I don't pick up when I'm actually writing on the laptop. And I'm not talking about like mistakes that I picked up when it's reading it out to you. I mean, just mistakes in like the way it's written and, you know, just changes in sentences and picking different words. And like, oh, I tend to find when I'm reading using my phone, it 
I don't know, I, I, I tend to read it. I read it more like I'm reading a book as opposed yeah. to reading my own work. Yeah. Or you'll, no, you'll notice that maybe you should have added another sentence to fill out some idea or maybe cut some, a sentence that mm. maybe was not supposed to be there. But it, 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 it's good to definitely read your story in different ways, like from different devices, because it gives you another point of view, I guess you could say. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I think going forward, I'm going to have a set sort of process that I put each story through, which includes what I've mentioned in the podcast either or was it on Monday's podcast, Wednesday's podcast, when I was saying that I found these words that you can just delete, that, you know, don't need to be in a story. Yeah. And then I, I might move on to a website I found that picks up words that are close together, you oh, know, yeah. repetitive yeah. words. And, I'm, I'm, you know, if you start off basically at the top, going through your passive sentences and all the things that word picks up, then move up to the next tier, which is deleting words that you no longer need. Then moving up to this website where, you know, you pick up repetition. And, you know, if you do it like that and sort of work your way from top to bottom. And then at the very last, then you have two listens through, listening to the program, read out your story. Yeah. Just picking the pros, I suppose, um, out of it. Then I think at the end of it, you're going to get a pretty good story, you know. And I've seen it in my work that everything I've written for the past year or so where I've, I've put it through a more strenuous process. It's more polished, you know, when I read back, it's not looking as amateurish as some of my older stuff did before yeah. that. You know, you, you're still reading back going, oh, actually, yeah, it's a, it's a good story, that. Um, you know, it's, it's well written. A couple of publications have got back to me on, you know, even though they've not accepted some of my stories and said, heading in the right direction then, they're not rejecting you because you right to them rejecting you because they just don't like a particular story. Yeah, if you go through the story, the process that you go through. Yeah. What you're not going to pick up on is, um, all the time, is discrepancies in your story, you know, when parts that are, you know, little plot holes and things like that in there, you know, you don't always pick that up when you read it. Yeah. Because you know the story, you know, you know from start to finish what's going to happen to this character or these characters. So, you miss that out because you're thinking to yourself, oh, yeah, well, obviously she does this and then she does that. And then, actually, when someone else reads it, they go, well, how did this happen? You know, there's a transition here and how did she get there? And, you know, yada, yada, yada. And, and then you realise, oh, yeah, actually. Yeah. And I tend to find that even when I go back to very old stories, I sort of slip into a groove with it and I know what I'm going to say next, you know, because I know my writing style and I know the way I, my, my voice. Yeah. in stories so I, that doesn't help me even if I leave a story for ages it's, it's good for picking up mistakes grammar, grammatically and spelling and stuff yeah. but it's not very good for going back and spotting plot holes because again you just you know the story uh, you know yeah. the, the thing I was going to say too is when you do that the words that you use where like he picked this up she picked that up you know you make it la yeah. it's lazier speech to text or actually reading through it will help you with that it'll weed those out it'll make you make a better sentence It'll force mm -hmm. you to make a better sentence, and then you'll have to flesh it out a little more, I guess you could say, in, in terms yeah. of... Working through that process will force you to be more creative yeah. in terms of the way you... And you'll read it back and you'll go, oh yeah, it actually reads better because of that. Because I'm not saying, you know, with all the time or that all the time. I mean, yeah. I mean most of the time you can delete that. There's only you know, a minimum number of times you need to use that. Yeah. The same with passive sentence. I used to do passive sentences all the time and I didn't yeah. even know what I was doing. And I remember Benny Jenner was sort of telling me about the passive sentences. I was like, what the hell is a passive sentence? I didn't even know when I started writing what one was. was. It took a while for me to understand what one was. I to, you know, I was, I was taking out passive sentences that weren't passive sentences, you know, and leaving passive sentences in place because I didn't know what it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's only since I've had uh, upgraded to a laptop and I've started using Microsoft Word on my laptop instead of using Microsoft Word on my tablet, which is like a, like a slightly sort of minimized version of it. Yeah. That I've, I've realized the difference, you know, when looking at what a passive sentence is, you know, and it highlights it and tells you this is about you, go, oh yeah, of course, it makes sense. Microsoft Word is brilliant. You know, it spots so many mistakes, so, I mean, so many obvious mistakes. I've even got all the, I've got all the grammatical filters on more or less, you know, there's yeah. only a few that I've got on ticked. Because you can ignore um, them if you want, you don't have to actually listen to them. Well, yeah, start off with them all, and then we, there's like one that spots discrepancies in sex and stuff like that, so, uh, like male and female characters and stuff, and if you say, like, I don't know, bloke, you know, look at that bloke, 
you know, it's like this is this. Don't you mean this person? You know, and it, get, it just got a bit annoying. Yeah. You yeah. know, because there, sometimes people don't speak like that, do they? No. You know, oh, I saw this person walking down the road. She did this, this, and this. You know, it's like I saw this woman, or I saw this lady, or walking down the road, and you know, they say, no, this is this is inappropriate language, and it tells you. And you I had it on for a while, and then I just took it off. Yeah. On that note, <laughs> we'll see. You, we'll see you next time. See ya. Mm. It's all with my kids in It's all with my kids in He's turned into Peter Steele, the late Peter Steele, rest in peace, from uh, Typo Negative. It's no secret we're close. <laughs> Plenty Velcro. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, hi, guys. I'm just a, <laughs> just a monster here. You know that you're going to stick a finger up there. It, Jesus, there it goes. Well, there it goes. Oh, yeah. The dog there came out. Um, mm. <laughs> I keep forgetting, man. No, no. Oh, wait, 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 wait. This will be the last thought, and then we'll end it. Okay. Oh, so, <laughs> geez. So you get that, you get that, you know, remember we were talking about, um, you have the... the words that you use where like he picked this up well yeah. uh, you were saying you sent it out to a place and they ah who gives <laughs> I don't even know <laughs> it was probably not that important <laughs> very scary man Yes. Yeah. So, uh, that's the thing yeah. too, you know. You, like you said, you you catch. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um. Exactly. Yes. This this beer has lost me all week. That beer is very Holy. big. Right. Did you like cap it? You corked it, right? Until we got to the next episode? I corked it. Yes, with my finger. Jesus Christ. Don't say it. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. Okay. What are you talking about? Okay. <laughs> the dog is watching, just know that. Yeah, he is. He's, uh, well, actually, the, the sexy dog's asleep. <laughs> don't, don't wake him up, let him sleep. Poochy, 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 poochy. <laughs> He's like, what the hell's wrong with you, man? <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, when you go through those things, you catch the... <laughs> I can't think, man. <laughs> Wait, you were saying that... The program that you use, you, get, you go through it. It's no secret with this. My girlfriend's girlfriend. She looks like you. <laughs> Not because I was being sexist, it's just it picks up every little, your, anything that's got a male or a female. You're a sexist, of, Gary. Well, yeah, yeah, that's the, yeah <laughs> according to Microsoft Word, I am, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but on that note, we, are, we have to go and uh, do our lives, and Gary looks very cute right now. He's a little character in a manga.
magazine. Ooh, Pika Pika. <laughs> uh, we will see you on Sunday, maybe, if um, I can get over this last Sunday's live episode. <laughs> and uh, we'll definitely see you next Monday. Uh, yes, Gary. Ooh. <laughs> that mouth gets bigger. 